Well, you had uh, lugged into there a lot of um, um, instruments that <laughs> that uh, have that kind of found quality to them. This, there's mm -hmm. a, actually a new instrument on the album that. Um, oh, a conundrum. Yeah. Yeah, Serge built that friend of mine. Um, it was. It's really. Now it's it's not really uh, it's it's just a metal configuration. It was, like a metal cross, it looks a little bit like a Chinese torture device. It's, it's it's a simple thing, but it makes it gives you access to these alternative sound sources. And hit them with a hammer. Sounds like a jail door <laughs> yeah. closing behind you. <laughs> I like it. You end up with bloody knuckles when you play it. You just you hit it with a hammer until you just. <laughs> you can't hit it anymore. It's a great feeling to hit something like that. Really, just slam it as far as you can with a hammer. It's good. It's good therapeutic. All that. Listening to KCRW, Morning Becomes Eclectic is a show. I'm Chris Doritas, and we have with us Tom Waits. Um, do you try things uh, a lot of different ways when you're when you're working out a song? Um, uh, the way I understand it is that, that you and uh, your wife Kathleen had come up with about 60 different ideas for this album, and you, uh, you know, uh, after whittling them down, you came up with what you, which we, you know, have left on the album. There's you like always throw out a lot of songs, not throw them out, but you cannibalize them. That's it. <clears throat> That's part of the process. Frankenstein, that number over there, take the head off of him and put it on the, sew it over here onto this guy. Immediately, <laughs> yeah. Keep him alive until until the head has been severed. And uh, it's it's a uh, part of song building, really. Kathleen is uh, great to work with. She's a lapsed Catholic from Illinois. She's loaded with uh, mythology and um, great sense of melody. And. Uh, I spin the chamber and she fires it. It's Russian roulette. Sometimes you get great things. But, uh, collaboration is great with her. And uh, but we did have a lot of songs that were just dis discarded. Um, but that's part of the process. You know, so. uh, your kids actually contributed some to the to uh, the record as well. Oh yeah. How does this come up? Is this a bit like breakfast table conversation? <laughs> oh, you know. I, I mean, everybody gets, gets in. Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> uh, my old girl said uh, she has a, a word called, the, the word is strangels. It's a cross between strange and angels. Strange angels. Strangels. They're called strangels. And I said, or you could have brangels. Those are the strange angels that live in your head, would be angels. And, uh, we just went around and around with it, and it wound up in the ocean, doesn't want me today. <clears throat> that little suicide note on the album. And, uh, yeah, the kids, great. For the, hey, kids write thousands of songs before they even learn how to talk. They write better songs than anybody. So you hope you could write something that a kid would like. You know. yeah. um, Toughest audience. I got a fan letter from somebody <clears throat> in the Midwest that said, well, uh, uh, my little girl is, uh, is just coming around to your uh, songs now. She, They scare her a little bit. She thinks you, you sound like a cross between a cherry bomb and a clown. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, kids, you can't fool kids. They either like you or they don't. <laughs> the Ocean Doesn't Want Me Today. That's a song from Bone Machine. It's the new release from Tom Waits. It's on Island Records. You're listening to Morning Becomes Eclectic on KCRW, and we're happy to have with us Tom Waits. Um, when, you, uh, when you finally get the songs down to where you want them to be, um, 
lyrically and uh, musically. Um, and you've got the band there. As you're trying things out, do you have the tape rolling, or do you wait till you've got it, you rehearse it, and then you get the tape going, or is it? Do you stir the uh, milk in before you add the batter? Do you do you add the eggs before? I, do you put the? What do you put the cinnamon in? <laughs> is it after the nutmeg, or do you first put the uh, scallions in, and then you uh, dice? <laughs> what do you do? You brulee that? Or do you saute that? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, do you always do you lift the lid or do you not lift the lid? Huh? How do you know when a song is dead? When it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna come to life. Well, some of them, are, yeah, never come to life. Some of them, it's like being. Um, sometimes you have to be like a a doctor. You have to look at them medically. What's wrong with this? You have to diagnose them. Some of them are. Or have have maladies that are impossible to to deal with, and some of them you can't diagnose. Some songs you work on them for months, and they'll never make the journey. They'll be left behind. Yeah. And you, someone has to break the news to them. <laughs> so, we had a lot. Of, I had one called Filipino Box Spring Hog. It was a song <clears throat> about a this uh, old neighborhood uh, ritual and the song didn't make it on the record it broke my heart but it, it was um, just it just couldn't come I, I, so we didn't I mean it was a, it was good it maybe it'll come out on something else but, um, it was a song about a kind of like jambalaya you know? jambalaya crawfish pie I feel like I'm over here. so it goes back in the scrap heap if you yeah. don't use it back in the compost mm. Are you a particularly religious person? Do you no, think? I wouldn't say I'm, no. I'm not religious. No. Brought no. up religious at all? Oh, I had church when I was a kid. Yeah, my mom heard the title of the album and she didn't like it. Bone Machine. She says, "Why must we always degrade?" <laughs> <laughs> she says, "Remember, the devil hates nothing more than a singing Christian." <laughs> Oh, I went to church when I was a kid. And one Sunday morning, I finally decided I wasn't going to go anymore. So I stopped. I don't know what's uh, out there or up there. Or, I don't know. A little office. A little office, like when you're, you know, when your car gets towed in New York and you have to go down to Pier 74. And it's like four in the morning, and there's a plexiglass shield. It's like three inches thick with with uh, bullet holes in it. An old woman with uh, bifocals uh, sitting there, a typewriter. You realize that your car is you can see it along, you know, chain gang <laughs> to hundreds of other cars over there, and your car looks ashamed and and embarrassed. And you realize she, you know, she's got the, you know, the whole. She's got your destiny in her hands. So it's probably something like that. I mean, after you die, people think it's going to be simple. But I mean, please, it's going to be an organizational nightmare after you die. All these spirits, uh, who are, where, where, you know, what did you do, and where did you, do you have your number? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be hell. So, you're gonna have to really, and to be able to find somebody after you've died, it's really gonna be hard because there're gonna be people that can't identify their loved ones because they're just little lights blinking. It's gonna be rough. So. <laughs> That's from the bone machine. You're listening to KCRW. Morning becomes eclectic. I'm Chris Doritas, and we have Tom Waits with us. What must uh, your upbringing have been like? I mean, were your parents musical at all? Were they uh, funny people? Funny people? As you were growing up? <laughs> my dad's very musical. My mother also. They both sing. Really? Yeah, we had music in the house. We had Bing Crosby. We had Harry Bell Funny. 
We had Marty Robbins. <laughs> so they sang along with the records and... Uh, uh, Maria, a lot of mariachi music. My dad loved and still loves. He's a Spanish teacher. And he... So that's what we listened to more than anything else, really. I wasn't allowed to listen to any of that hot rod music. So, uh, I don't know where your musical education usually comes from. A little bit from what you heard when you were a kid, and then you're off on your own expedition. You, 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 and what you do with it is, is up to you, or how you integrate it. I, I have always felt like I find things that have fallen off a truck. I like that sound of this, I'll find some way to integrate it. Or, you know, uh, I go at it like the eyeball kid. I try to... Annex this and change this. Um, I don't know what, uh, where, how it all comes together, but um, it once you have musical confidence, and and that usually comes from being naive uh, enough to to explore without feeling self-conscious, because you really do want songs to like you as much as you like them, and that and there are there are things about music that <clears throat> there are places in music where you, you, you can only go if you're, if you're an idiot. Yeah. It's the only way you can get in. Um, you know, there's high music, there's low music. We put an orchestra together in Hamburg that was half guys in the train station and the other half were, were all uh, orchestral guys. And, and they nobody got along. <laughs> You think, oh, well, great, they'll, they'll, everyone will teach everyone how to, yeah, yeah. And there's, I don't know, there were some places where it did come together great, but, um, I don't know, it, it, music is a, it's a living thing, and so it can be, you can hurt it, you can bruise it, you can bruise the gin if you're not careful, so, I don't know, I, I love to, uh, you know, it's, I, I just, you know, songs are, are, are strange. They're very simple. They come quickly. If you don't take them, they'll move on. They'll go to somebody else. Someone else will write it down. Don't worry about it. Do you realize the music the way you heard it in your head? Well, you know, I, I, I always make compromises. If I really put it down the way I really want to hear it, nobody else would want to listen to it but me. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you mean the way I you... I clean everything up, I, I, within reason. You know, <laughs> I, I'm getting more and more... Like, I like, to, I like to step on it, step on the negative, grind it into the gutter, and put that through the projector. You know, I always love it. It's what Keith Richards calls the, the hair in the gate at a movie, you know, when everybody's watching a movie and all of a sudden a piece of hair catches in the projector and everyone's going wow look at that hair and then whew, and it flies out and that's like that was the most exciting moment in the film you know? it's like orchestra orchestras tuning up sometimes are the most interesting point in the evening's performance oh when you guys were tuning up you really well, you had something there <laughs> and when you started to play the, the music left 